process to buy a trailer has to start with the trailer you're proposing to buy as well as the car that you're proposing to tow it with. Uh, these, especially the SUVs, have a very limited bore weight and uh, camper trailers, in particular the off-road units, uh, their bore weights are often too great for some of the SUVs that are going around the market that are very popular at the moment. Yeah, we can give full advice on vehicles' towing capabilities, uh, bore weights and also their tow rate. Um, of course, you've also got braking to think about. Anything over 750 kilos will need brakes, so electric brakes are most preferred in this case. But yes, definitely come and see someone that can give you some ideas on what is correct and what is going to be legal because the uh, Department of Transport are all over this. Camper trailers can offer a great amount of versatility, but I think the first thing is you look at the age of the kids and how many you have and what you take for them. For example, if the kids are two and three years old, they are going to be inside that trailer with you for a longer period of time. Whereas if they're 12 and 13, they're getting to the stage where they want their own swag or tent. And if they've been brought up camping, they're going to be well and truly away from mum and dad. So you buy your trailer for a, it's a 10 year purchase. It's not a two year purchase. So always look forward to where you're going to head and where your age group of families are and the size of the family, of course. Um, look at obviously hard floor versus forward fold versus soft floor. Uh, soft floor have a lot of room on the side, but again, you have to have clear space to use the soft floor and you have to clear a deck to have the floor at a level area. Some of the bigger hard floor units, uh, you can put in three kids on the floor uh, versus a forward fold that you've really got to put a table down. Uh, there now are front and rear fold units that you can put two kids in, but when you're getting three and four kids, it becomes fairly cramped. I guess that sort of touches on the first subject, but yeah, ball weights are critical. Um, a lot of the forward fold units, your ball weights dry, are getting up towards your 180 to 200 kilos and you need to be aware of that, not only for off-roading, but also for the GVM on your car, because that 200 kilos is part of your vehicle GVM. Uh, and then you've got the ability to use it off-road, because it is heavy, um, you have to be very aware of that. You know, you get trailers now that are up towards two tonne, you're on the beach and you've got soft sand, you're towing two tonne around. So just have a look at a trailer that's gonna suit your needs for your sort of travel. Um, you know, you can get trailers from sort of 700 kilos up uh, that are still gonna be able to cape with some sand and gravel roads and, and, and et cetera. Um, but yeah, just need to watch that weight very carefully because you're the one that's hauling it around and there is no drive on those wheels. So look at position of wheels on trailers. So if they're a long way back, think of bore weight and all wheel loading, so. Yeah, what makes a camper trailer tough? It's what it's going to do. Um, I think when you're towing it down a, a rock, if you're towing it up a creek full of rocks, it's usually very slow. So you don't need to have, um, you're in low range one, so you don't need to have all this travel on your suspension because it's on a single plane. There's not a wheel on each corner that's going to show wheel travel. That trailer is going to tilt with the plane that it's on. The biggest thing of killer of cars and trailers is corrugations. If you are on big corrugations that are a foot apart and they're four or five inches deep, slow down, let some tyre pressure out and you'll get your trailer home. If you think you're going to get up on top, you're just going to break things and lose control and then you won't be towing it home and it's an expensive recovery. So. It is drive to conditions as well as buying a trailer. Sure, independent suspension is going to give you a better ride, um, but you know what? There's a whole lot of people driving dual cabs that are still on leaf springs and beam axles, so getting your spring rate right and getting your tyre pressure right is just as critical. Australian made, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's very few Australian made trailers left. Fortunately, we are uh, one, of course. Um, Australian-made, so we're using Australian-made canvas from wax converters, 
because you'll find that a lot of the imported canvas has uh, formaldehyde in it, which uh, personally I don't want to sleep next to. Um, we look at Australian steel, it's consistent, it's not brittle then soft, it's a very consistent product. First off you look at size that suits your travel. Mm. So if you look at you're doing a two week trip versus doing a four month trip, you may want a bit more room with your four month trip. From there we'll then look of course at what you're driving, for weights and their a budget because that does come into it um, and from there we can then build or customise trailers accordingly. So for instance we have a middle sized trailer that you can do your longer trips in it starts at 900 uh, sorry at 800 kilos and goes up to 1250 kilos so we can work within a parameter uh, so that it will suit your purpose off-road um, without being too heavy for your needs. Absolutely different kitchens, different suspension, different size tyres different beds, you may have a single bed consideration because you've got sore backs and you want to swing and stand up rather than crawl off a bed. Um, yeah, the, we can go on and on, double tanks, hot water systems, yeah, the so list goes that, on. Is, it, is that really a personal? It's an absolutely a personal touch, yeah, you yeah. can build what you like to build. Yeah, look at the warranty and what the warranty covers, uh, if, it, if it does cover you off-road, I think the big thing to consider if you're in the off-road market is that it's an expensive recovery. If you're at the Talawana track or at the Tanamai or somewhere, it's an expensive recovery to get them home. So one is drive to conditions, two is buy a trailer that's going to handle those conditions uh, and three, make sure your cars can, can handle the conditions and the trailer. We see way too many cars with a ball weight that's way too big for the vehicle and uh, it's just not the right way to go about it. One, you'll lose control if you have no stability control. Um, so yeah, there's a whole lot of factors. Always in the bush, make sure you've got the general spares, a bit of grease, a set of bearings, yeah. maybe a shock absorber. Yeah. Uh, you certainly will cover that every time if you're doing a lot of bush work. Oh, ease of towing. Uh, ability to go areas you can't with big vans um, and the fact you can, like Bungles or Pernalulu, uh, you're not allowed to take a caravan in but you are allowed to take a camper trailer in. So that's one thing. But you get down a track, you've, you've still got a trailer that behind you but uh, you haven't got a caravan that's eight foot wide going through a six foot wide gap. Um, you know, you've just got a little bit more versatility, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. And it's lighter to tow. Fuel efficient. Much more fuel efficient. Yeah, yeah camp tra caravans, two totally different things. One is canvas and the other is hard. Um, but size is big. Um, off-road ability is huge. Like there's a lot of off-road vans around there. And serious, there are some really super, super cool off-road vans mm -hmm. out there. But they are still seven, eight, nine foot high. And trees aren't. Um, and they are still bigger and longer usually as a rule. Um, certainly hybrids and the likes are, are certainly similar wheelbase to the trailers but you know you get a 21 foot tandem axle van and you've got to turn between trees even if you have got the height you haven't got the turning circle so there is a there, there are differences yeah especially off-road if you're just touring around the country and want to stay in caravan parks well yeah caravan park a caravan is a lovely thing to use but luxurious but I think camper trailer people are more friendly when we get there we live outside we talk to people as they walk by it's the Australian thing to do there's too many people get to the place in their caravan set up their satellite lock the door and watch the television well you can do that at home so yeah I think camper trailer people are friendlier <laughs> Before you buy a trailer, always come and see someone like ourselves. I mean, personally, I've been doing this for over 30 years, so we do have some idea of what's right and what's wrong. Um, it's important that you get the right information to make the right purchase the first time, uh, because we don't want people coming in with mistakes. And, and not only does it put them off the product that they're using, it puts them off 
the whole idea of holidaying in a camper trailer or going off road or going out and we don't want to scare them out because we've got a lot to see out in this country at the moment. So yeah, come on down and see ourselves or, or other people, but yeah, pick our brains and get the right trailer to suit what you need to do.